I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com and in this tutorial I want to run you through how I create a fixed position composite. Uh, this is the finished version but it's constructed from numerous layers and I thought I'd take the opportunity of running you through the individual uh, exposures or frames in Lightroom before we jump this project into Photoshop CC. So let's take a look at the first image. This is um, uh, an image that I captured of a guy called Wilson inside of this courtyard here. Now he's illuminated with a handheld strobe going through a diffuser and the background is uh, underexposed by maybe as much as two stops. This really makes the character pop. Now um, typically what we would normally do is we would normally photograph the what's this is called the background plate first this is the um, this could be likened to the stage um, in a theater production where all of the action and drama happens now it's very important that there is nothing in uh, this uh, background plate okay and then the characters appear and disappear and we can modify the lighting uh, inside of this stage Okay, but the reason I worked with Wilson first is you'll notice that the background behind Wilson is out of focus. And this is one of the critical factors to success with this project. We must make sure that the aperture, ISO, shutter speed, focus and white balance are all consistent through all of the shots. And so therefore it was much easier to focus uh, on Wilson first then have Wilson step out of the frame and take a second shot. Now I'm using a remote release on the camera so I don't knock the camera. You'll notice that the, um, the uh, exposure settings here stayed the same, exactly the same between those two exposures. Now we move over to that uh, the third image and you can actually see my lighting technique in here. I've got an assistant holding the handheld strobe and illuminating Wilson who's now moved back um, to the right of the frame. Now the subsequent compositing is much much easier if your subjects don't overlap. So he moves into a, a space or completely away from where he was previously standing. Okay, now let's uh, look at the final image. We have the strobe illuminating uh, the top of the archway of the background plate. So let's just go back into grid view and let's collect those four images. I'll just shift click so they're all selected. I'll uh, right click and choose edit in, open as, um, sorry, open as layers in Photoshop. Now I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit one of the things that I should say here is if you've done any editing to these files, let's take a look at one of these files in um, the uh, develop module. If you've optimized these files, it's very important that we synchronize all four files uh, that we've been taking out. So um, this is a, a very critical part of that process. So if I go back into uh, the grid view, all four images are selected. I'll simply hit sync settings and if you are worrying about what to select then simply select check all. Okay I've already done this with my images so I'll go back and select those four images once again and take them into Photoshop. Right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Instead of open in Photoshop this open as layers will open all four files into the same document as layers. Okay, this might take a while. These are actually 42 megapixel uh, raw files captured on my camera. And so um, Photoshop has got a little bit of work to do in order to open uh, these four files. Um, they're coming in now and uh, we should be ready to start the compositing process uh, very soon. Now, if you think you may have bumped the camera or you don't have a remote release and you had to fire the shutter release by touching the actual shutter release on the camera, then it's probably worthwhile just holding down the shift key, clicking all of the layers, then coming up to the edit menu and choosing auto align layers and then choose the auto projection and then select OK. Now, because I was re uh, using a remote release, I don't need to do that part of the process. But um, the whole project is not sunk if one of the layers is slightly out of alignment. Okay, so I've just noticed that the background plate is actually um, 
just down from the top here. So I'm going to pull that down so it's on the bottom of the layer stack. We're now going to add a layer mask to each of the top three layers. We do not need a, la a layer mask on the base layer. Otherwise, if we work in that layer mask, we may force transparency. OK, so let's uh, select that top layer mask, select the brush tool. We'll select black as the foreground color. If you're not too sure whether that is black or not, just press the D key for defaults and then the X key to switch it around. So black is the foreground color. We're going to be working with 100% opacity and we're working with 0% hardness on the brush. And then we simply hide Wilson. Now I actually want to keep Wilson from this frame, but working uh, in reverse actually makes this whole compositing a lot easier, I have found. Okay, so um, I would also suggest holding down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and clicking on that layer mask just to make sure we don't have any areas that are not 100% black in that masking work. Okay, once that is done, we just use the keyboard shortcut, Command I on a Mac, Control I on a PC to invert that layer mask. We now repeat the process on the layer below. So again, we will hide Wilson because we want to keep him. We might use some of that spilled lighting. Now this is where it's really important to use that soft brush so that we don't see our brushwork later when we invert the layer mask, such as that. Okay, if you think that you need to soften that up a bit, usually a bigger, softer brush is usually the answer rather than trying to do any fiddly work. I'll just undo that. I'm going to uh, switch so I have white as the foreground color and just feed that in a lot more slowly at that puddle of light. Now, if I work too close, I'm going to start bringing that diffuser in. I'll just show you that. We'll just um, switch to black again and hide that area. Okay, so you see how the uh, masking is very easy. No selection tools, uh, no pen tool, no uh, sophisticated selections, just a big soft brush. Okay, and again, we'll come down to that, um, the, uh, the final layer. And again, we need to hide. I'll just reduce the size of that brush. Hide that uh, light that's uh, lighting the top of the arch there. And then invert that layer mask. Okay, so that really uh, makes fast work of completing this fixed position composite. I might just finish this off by coming in uh, with a crop and I'll choose a 16-9 aspect ratio and just move that into the right framing there and commit that. And that really is the project completed. I'll just uh, save that. I opened them from Lightroom, so I'll just do Command S for save. That's Control S on a PC. And if we go back into Lightroom, you'll see the one that I've just edited has already been catalogued back with the original files. Okay, I'm Mark Gaylor for markgaylor.com. Uh, thumbs up and share the information if you found it useful.